welcome to this week's episode of Automotive Weekly. Um, so we actually are going to be doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we previously had our car podcast slash car chats that we used to be doing, uh, but we decided we want to try to take a little bit of a different approach to it. So instead, we're going to have just one topic that we're going to talk about and kind of just see where the conversation goes. And this is something that we want to get you guys involved in. So if you have something that you'd like us to talk about, be sure you talk about it in the comments section below. But at the same time, let us know your thoughts on the topic that we're currently talking about, which today... Wait for it. Oh, wait, we're not going to... I would don't touch the table. Air, well, air drum and then add it in post. Uh, <laughs> Terrible. We're going to be talking about um, <laughs> how the rise of electric cars is going to be affecting mod the modification scene in regards to aftermarket and how it's kind of affected cars, the car scene, like in mod like cars that are currently coming out and how that's, you know, affecting all that. So um, I want to go ahead and start it off a little bit here. I think the big thing that everyone's really thinking about is with the lack of gas engines, how are we going to do power adders and stuff like that, which is something that it's kind of being kind of interesting. Now, I know Tesla's talks a little bit about this. You know, they do this like the ludicrous mode and they, you know, pull more like voltage from the batteries and stuff like that to actually get it to go. But um, what are y'all's thoughts? Like, what do you think that future looks like? He's the Tesla man right there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything that was power mods. Did you? No, like, I, I, I've seen a lot of uh, stuff, like, because there's people doing, like, suspension and brakes and stuff like yeah. that. Because even Teslas have that kind of stuff. Yeah, I saw a bunch <laughs> of people swapping out motors for bigger motors. Okay, so like a, yeah. But, I mean, that, it's not really a mod, that's just a replacement. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the interesting things, too, because, you know, before, I, I don't know, maybe it's just different, though, because it's like, you know, before, if you were wanting to do a bigger swap, let's say you're going from, like, a four-cylinder to an LS, I mean, that's a pretty substantial swap. I guess the problem that people are going to be running into right now is the whole wiring aspect. So if you're running, if you put a different motor in that's not from that brand. Yeah. Yeah, I think think about it like it's, yeah, it's a car, but think about it like tech, you know, like yeah. a computer, you know, in order to upgrade it, you're going to have to upgrade like the CPU, big stuff like that. And that market's just not there yet for mm -hmm. these cars. And maybe one day it will. And I mean, the more people buy them, the more, more that'll happen for sure. But like the biggest things are cosmetics. Yeah. You know, right now. And you think about, you know, tech as far as like your phone and stuff, the biggest, the biggest things are, you know, your phone case. Yeah. So of course, like, you know, the biggest things for them were like wraps. Like the first thing most people yeah. do when they get a Tesla or a really nice expensive electric car is they wrap it immediately. So anything that can protect it or that can change the way it looks, I think those are really big right now. You know, and they, and like the the suspension and stuff, mm -hmm. they they're just they're not as big. Like a lot of companies are still kind of testing the waters with those. Yeah. But uh, but those are big deals too. And I think um, Tanner was talking yesterday about how Tesla actually already has air suspension yeah. built yeah. into their cars already. So it's like, you know, do, do you really do you really need those yeah, things yeah. if it already does what you would mod it to do? Uh, and the answer is yes, like because it's not sports suspension and stuff like right. that. Yeah. Well, and I think the because that air suspension is I think right now it's only on the expensive Teslas. I think it's the S and the yeah. um the, the X. S. Yeah, it doesn't have it on the, the Model Three. I don't think because I there was a guy I was watching on YouTube who had uh, it was a Model Three and he lowered it on like coilovers and stuff like that. And this is like he this Tesla Three was like pretty much right after like they came out and I was surprised that they were actually able to get a set that would fit within because I mean it was within months yeah yeah so I think there's like they made it for that yeah yeah exactly <clears throat> um and I think that's where really, the really interesting things that I'm kind of curious about which by the way consider speaking of cosmetics and stuff like that rocket bunny we're looking at you we want to see a wide body tesla make it happen <laughs> it's gonna happen so that would look so good that would look really good um but it's one of the other th really interesting things because I know a lot of these new electric cars also have really weird bolt patterns. So wheel mm. companies are having to adapt or they're yeah. having to sell adapters because yeah. like for instance, you have some of the spacers on your car. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for the people that are actually wanting to run like these classic, you know, Volk, Enki, whatever wheels, yeah. you know, that they're wanting to run. That makes sense. They're going to have to run adapters and stuff like that because i think like the tesla patterns like, i think one by 12 which is a really weird european pattern because that's your that's what your mini, mini is, is. Mini is yeah like 12 yeah so they do make them but they do. yeah it is it was hard to find a, a, a wheel that fit mine yeah because it was that weird bull pattern fair enough another thing is like you know electric cars now are expensive i mean there's only a couple of them that are cheap cheap right, right. i mean like the lowest teslas 
starting at 35 and that's with the discounts they say you will receive and say so you know, and that's <laughs> so, and that's like receive and it. that's still 35k yeah. that's still very expensive and so people modding these cars it's not like you're modding your honda civic that no, you pay no, 12 grand yeah. for you know these are ninety thousand dollar cars like do you really want to mess with it it's a battery right like this thing could explode i mean it's got yeah. shocking <laughs> some people say it's got shocking results hey oh that's terrible sorry what were you gonna say? <laughs> what I was reading, like people were like, "Don't mod your car. Mm. Don't mod your electric car because you could die." Yeah, it's that's like a good if point. you don't understand electricity and batteries, and you could very well not be on this earth anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's like, so I mean, well, and engines could blow up too, right? Yeah, and there's gas in them. It's, but, it's just a different oh, way. It's a different thing. Like, yeah. and you need a degree to work. Yeah, yeah to mod a electric car. And yeah. I think that actually raises a really, really good point, though, because. Uh, I mean, people, you can go on to, you can go and learn how to work on any engine nowadays. I mean, you, right. YouTube, Google forms, whatever, you can find that all around, but a lot of where that knowledge came from was people who learned how to work on cars and then spread it to the internet. Right. Mm-hmm. So these people will start out as mechanics specifically for these things. And I honestly am kind of expecting to see that exact same thing happen with the rise of electric cars. You're going to yeah. find people that are going to show you the safe way how to do this eventually, Absolutely. but it's just not there yet. Yeah. And it's going to take time to get it there. It will get there. Because, I mean, yeah. more and more, everywhere you look, there's an electric car. Mm-hmm. Whether you recognize it as a Tesla or not, there's still a lot of them. So I think I think the more and more people buy them, the more and more people like us that buy them yeah. that are going to pay for those mods, <laughs> it'll happen. So I just want to see a, a Nissan Leaf that's doing a sub nine second quarter mile. Man. <laughs> Let's see that Leaf go, man. <laughs> now, I will say that one of the most interesting mods I have found for electric cars is, uh, gosh, I think it was called Sound Racer. Did y'all see any of this? No. It electronically puts in the sound of an engine. Come on now. I ha- Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I watched a video of a Tesla with it, and the sound was very electronic. You could tell it wasn't a real engine. Yeah. But the idea behind it, of course, they say, oh, it's for safety. This way people can hear you riding oh, so up on it. Oh, it's outside the car. It's sound. outside the car. Interesting. Okay. So I don't... It's in Sweden right now. It is a mod. It is a mod. But they say, like, you know, if somebody's walking down the street and you don't, there's no car noise or no engine noise, they can't hear you coming. So I put this on your car and then you can sound like this V8 driving down the road. Or this, they had a Ferrari, they had a Mustang, they had a. So can I get one of those for my Mini? You can. Oh, you can. I I feel like the the people that kind of do that kind of stuff, though, I mean, unless it's if it's a manufacturer thing, I think that's one thing. But as an aftermarket thing, it's the same thing as like sticking a speaker on your car that does not have a turbo and putting turbo noises through that. You know, exactly what it is. It's well, and that's really (laughs) my main drawback to electric, because man, because a really not ninety thousand dollar car that's a sports car like that, it's it's gonna sound so good. Yeah, I mean that's like that's like Aston Martin territory. I mean, like you're gonna. Beat the tail <laughs> off true. of all those all those cars in the same range, but it's not going to sound good. Which, if you want a really good example of that, you can check out our Tesla video. Um, on the behind the scenes, the owner was talking about how a guy pulled up to him mm-hmm. and, and like a, a modded out Camaro, and then he just the Camaro lost so oh, badly. Yeah. It was just ridiculous. So go check that out if you haven't seen that already. But that's the really interesting thing because it's like I said, ninety thousand dollars is like. Aston Martin territory. I mean, you can get a really nice vantage for that. Yeah. Or I, you can get a Maserati, like Lahibi or whatever that four door new version of the Quattroporte is. Um, they're like sixty thousand dollars new, yeah. and those sound really, really good. Yeah. And I think it's one of the things that everyone is really sad about with the electric thing because if you, we are losing that noise. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that, in Formula Drift this year, there's an electric Camaro. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right in our town, uh, Donut Media covered it. Oh, really? Yeah, bumper to bumper, and it. <clears throat> and then that segues way into like my next point like the biggest electric modification is turning non-electric cars into fully electric cars mm. that's a huge thing right now that i saw on youtube like yeah like video after video people just converting their cars wow. some of them were success some of them weren't but that camaro had a lot of money and a lot of yeah. stuff put into it yeah. and it's baller it, it's really interesting to see because there's a really cool movement that's come out because like the grassroots uh, people have been doing this for like actually like people have been doing this for years now but I think it's really cool that it's really starting to get the mainstream attention and people are actually seeing the benefits of it because you know go back 10 years ago battery technology was just not there right. like yeah. you couldn't do it without having you know a couple thousand pounds of extra weight in the car on the car that's already heavy as it is mm-hmm. um, you, there's some uh, there's a lot of people in Australia where they import Japanese little key cars and then put battery stuff in there because they're already so lightweight and it gets them actually and they'll be like 
you know, they're doing good to get 90 miles, but then the people that have been doing these newer conversions, they've actually been getting some, not only good horsepower like that Camaro, but I mean, just like actual like distance. So there are companies that are making these batteries to like put in old. I think it's a common gas cars. I didn't research it yeah. very much. I just saw like, as I was trying to find modifications, yeah. all I found was a lot of people converting. Converting. So I didn't know if they were like buying wrecked Teslas. <laughs> there, there is <laughs> a guy that's like doing that. that though. Yeah, that's, I really. It's on Audi, uh, an Audi with yeah. a Tesla engine in it. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, yeah. Tesla yeah. powered train <laughs> system. I don't know. Tesla thing. <laughs> And <laughs> there's a company that makes um, electric classic Volkswagens. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yo. I found them. They're like $100,000. <laughs> 100000 <laughs> Do you know where they are? Uh, probably in California. Yeah, probably. That makes so. sense. If they were West Coast, that would be one that would be really cool to get in contact with. That would be well, you know, that, they, they had the concept of that VW bus. The electric bus, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. That looked awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I've never been a huge Volkswagen person until he introduced me to them. <laughs> it's the plaid seats. It's the plaid seats. Yeah. That's the, like the best part. <laughs> That's a good quirk. Yeah. I do like that quirk. But it's like, uh, but that new know. the new bus looks really good. I actually yeah. really even enjoy that. For yeah. Me. I would take it camping. Electric bus take camping. That'd be cool. So cool. Mm. Um, and I th- actually speaking of cool, I think that's a really cool thing as well. Um. When we were talking with Chip, the guy who owned the Tesla, because mm-hmm. uh, you know how people are like, at least in the old electric cars, um, the AC, if you turn the AC or the heat on, it would just kill the battery, right? Right. Um, Chip was saying in the new Teslas, there that AC is always going because it's cooling the batteries and it's just diverting some of that air. And I thought that was a really cool hmm. thing. So the range doesn't change. I was watching a video of, of a guy that was tracking, he was trying different modifications out. And um, they were getting it. It was one that when they they finally made all the mods to it, they were it's like the final track time. And he said, uh, "Oh, the AC just kicked on real hard." <laughs> he was like, "Feels great though." <laughs> but now it makes sense why it kicked yeah. on if it's using it to cool down the batteries and exactly. stuff. Because it's that always running. Sense. Yeah. And I thought that was the most bizarre thing. But as soon as you turn that heater on, it doesn't pull heat from the batteries. It just turns the heater coil on, and then it starts pushing it, and then that's yeah. what kills your battery right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, back when I was driving my uh, the Nissan Leaf that I drove for like two months, oh. Um, it, I, I was dry, I had it in the middle of winter and when I was, I, I had a 40 mile commute and one day it was like, I think it was 10 degrees when I left the house that morning, I turned the heater on and it said I had 39 miles of range. Oh my gosh. So I actually squeaked into the parking space with zero miles on that. And it, the, the, it was supposed, normally like if I had turned the heater off, it would have been 90. Yeah. Like I would have been able to actually get nine, but it nice. killed over ha- almost half the battery when all was said and done. Like. I think that's one. Of, that's going to be the next thing. If they, I wonder if they can start pulling heat from the batteries or figuring out some way to do that instead of running the heater coils. Because if they can figure it out that same way, I think that would really increase the range too. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I didn't know that was an issue. Yeah, that's a really big one. Um, I don't like being cold. Yeah, me neither. Oh, no, the, the, the I, as soon as they did that, I had to drive for the next three weeks in that car with no heat in the mornings. Oh, to make to, to make it to work. Yeah, just to make it to work in time. <laughs> oh, and gosh. it was ridiculous. Yeah, so. I'd go to my car at least 15 minutes till and preheat it. Kind of like, kind of like an oven. Yeah. Preheat your car. <laughs> I go inside. Then when I get in, I I got a heated seat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so down your bum's warm. I, I think I'm, I'm really interested too to see, kind of going back to the whole like where we actually are putting batteries into other cars. Because I think we're seeing a lot of that in like other European kind of based cars. Um, I'm really kind of curious to start seeing when people are going to start doing that with like the Japanese cars and yeah. stuff like that. Like stuff that you wouldn't expect to see in like a Honda Civic. Like there will be a day where someone's going to stick an electric motor into a Civic. And yeah. they may have done that already, honestly. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, they're going to. Odds are. It's already happened. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. So, or like we were talking about the S2K. Yeah. And they put the, they put the super engine in one. It's like, can you imagine with a, a Tesla motor? That would a car that small. Hey. Maybe, maybe you can't. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're using a big batteries and there probably has to be some sort yeah. of... Yeah. Well, and I, I think that's a really interesting point too because um, I've heard a lot of people... Or I've, like, you know, there's a lot of people saying that um, electric cars are going to ruin racing to an extent because mm-hmm. they do have such a short range and... I mean, they're, don't get me wrong, they, everyone agrees that the fact that electric cars can be really fast, but yeah. the range is such a big factor right now. But that's where you look at um, Formula E, which is, you know, Formula One cars that are electric cars. They actually are running now where they they actually run two cars. Okay. So they'll get halfway through the race, and then they swap cars. Oh, just hmm. have like two identical mm-hmm. cars. And I thought that's a really interesting way of approaching it. Yeah. 
because um, Tesla, they actually have a Tesla racing series, but the problem is they can only run like seven laps. In yeah, the they're not yeah. good for track. They're not, not good. I mean, you, one or two runs at the drag strip are great, but it starts degrading quick. Yeah. Because yeah. they just get overheating and they'll drop the power. I mean, even the video I was watching the guy on the track, he was like, it's got 335 horsepower at the start, but, you know, if I get up above, he said like 120 kilometers per hour, I went to East Ridge, so I'm not good at math, but whatever that is in miles, uh, he said you lose and it was down to like, to something yeah the horsepower hmm. drops big time absolutely you go. which you know gas engines are not going to do that no you know it's got a power band but it's not going to drop if just because you're going fast I mean, and there's a little bit of an issue with that like with heat soaking and stuff but it's nowhere near that extreme I mean, you're losing yeah. like 10 or 15 depending on obviously the ratio of the horsepower on the car but when you start dropping off as much as the electric cars do that's that's something that's going to have to be worked it's out it's a big deal it if you're in a race, race that's a big deal yeah. so they got to figure that out uh, like Porsche Porsche has that new Taycan, Taycan, yeah, and it's it's made for the track. They their claim is they're not going to lose it like Tesla's will. Well, and they um, that's the fastest electric car around the Nuremberg Ring right now. Yeah, which yeah, is, exactly. is really interesting. Um, I mean, Tesla came and beat it, but they reused a modified Tesla, uh, and it was not an official. So it's not an official I didn't lifetime. They did that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, the the one that they, the Porsche that they used for the. Nine Ring was the uh, a production model. Yeah, the one that the Tesla used. They, I think they had pulled like the rear seats out and added a spoiler and a couple other things to actually make it like grip. Yeah, yeah that's oh, I was talking to Tanner about it. That's the biggest thing I saw people doing is like weight reduction. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like putting new wheels on it to make it lighter. Took all the seats out, all the interior, everything. He's got just a driver's yeah. seat. I think it's really interesting because especially like with your FRS, um, even though they're 18s, I'm pretty sure those wheels are actually lighter than the factory ones. If I'm thinking correctly, I wouldn't know. I've never. Well, when, when I was looking, never handled it. Yeah, did you lift them? Uh, factory one. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're they're heavy with <clears throat> the rubber on them. But um, yeah. I think mine were mine were roughly the same. But you went up a size though. I right? did. I went sixteen to eighteen. So oh, you went up two sizes. Yeah. Then. You also went wider, right? I did. So that's impressive. Then running, yeah. and I think that's where the really ingen- some of the ingenuity is because people say you know taking weight out is the same as take adding horsepower. Yeah, you know. Oh, absolutely. Um. The, the 1320 did a video where the, there's a street they were doing some street racing and they had a te- guy with the tesla with no interior i mean you could pretty much see the batteries underneath and he was going up against like these 800 900 horsepower cars yeah um and like killing them because it's just so it was so light off the line that it just if you have to have a good reaction time yeah which i do not <laughs> <laughs> i think my fastest reaction time was like a point one, which is not great i've never tried I have cat like reflexes. So. Next next week on Automotive Weekly, we take the cars to the track. Hey oh kind of going back to the whole idea of the modif- modification and how it is gonna affect the aftermarket industry and everything like that. I wanna talk a little bit about how we're also affecting there's two things I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about like, you know, people coding, obviously I, we we're gonna talk about that, but I also wanna talk about how electric cars are starting to affect even non electric cars. Because if you look at the new Subarus that are coming out, um, the new Dodges that are coming out, they all, like, you know, Teslas are really well known for having their giant touchscreens in the middle. Mm -hmm. You're starting to see these on gas cars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, uh, we were talking about earlier that, like, a lot of the a lot of the cars were horizontal. Mm -hmm. Like, their their screens in the middle were horizontal. And then now a lot more are going vertical with them. you got so much more space. And a lot of that's just technologies allowing more. But I think car companies are realizing... More people want that bigger screen. But well, co- and Tesla started it. It's true. And oops, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was just saying, yeah, I'm yeah. agreeing. And yeah. I think it's the thing because um, yep. you look at how social media is right now. When people are producing videos for social media, like we do at um, our Facebook page, hey, Dub. Um, you, they're running in a, a vertical format now. Like you, everyone used to yeah, hate yeah, the, yeah, right. you know, right. when, oh yeah. And that, so that's also a really big thing right now. So vertical video. I think that's that's a really good point because. Mm-hmm. People thought they were wanting that, but when it comes, it's just that it fits so much better in the yeah. space when it's the Absolutely. vertical side up. I mean, you got so much more room there. You're not getting into airbags. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Know. And Tanner brought up the idea that um, a lot more of the, um, you know, fiddling with these cars is going to end up in the coding aspect. Yeah. Because that's where a lot of these cars are having their horsepower, you know, limited essentially. Right. So, um, and it, part of it may be, you know, actual like cable density, you know, that, you, that'll get really fiddly really quickly. But, um, I would be interested to see what the difference between like the wiring on like a formula E car versus like a, a modern electric car would be like, is it running different gauges and stuff like that? Cause if you can run a bigger gauge then you can flow more energy. That's a good point. A lot of that's scary, man. You're messing with the code and, and they they put safety 
you're basically undoing the safety measures, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking like certain traction controls off that what they wouldn't normally let you do, or taking limiters off, and then that gets back that like that's messing with what could blow up on you. Yeah. Like you're taking off the limits of how much this can push. And and I guess the only way they'll really know the limits is to actually blow it up. Yeah. And so, you know, it's gotta happen. It's like <laughs> it's like putting a car on a dyno. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see like like you said, people are going to have to start blowing stuff up. Because that's one of those things, like, if you blow up an engine, mm -hmm. like, on a normal car right now, if you blow up a Honda engine, you can go to the junkyard and pick it up for 400 oh, bucks. Oh, yeah, right. If you blow up a battery or an electric motor, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not only are you potentially risking, like, fire, because this lithium-ion batteries, if there's, like, exposure to air, they kind of can't combust. If I'm thinking correctly, is that right? Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't have it. Um, so, if you blow one of these motors, I think they're just going to, I mean, they're going to come down to price. I mean, they already are coming down yeah. to price. Yeah, I mean, but. Are. That's gonna be an extremely expensive fix. Yeah, I mean, we saw this with the Priuses even. Like it, when those motors stopped working in the Prius, they were very expensive to replace. It's, yeah, it's like you just need to buy a new car, basically. Um, and part of it too is the way the the architecture of how they build the cars. Like when there there was a guy who had a Pri he bought a Prius that had two dead cells in it, and Toyota said that it was gonna cost him like ten thousand dollars to fix it. But he went into a junkyard, found two other cells. Picked him up for like three hundred bucks, and he swapped it himself. But he obviously knew what he was okay, doing. So that's still really scary. <laughs> that is still very scary. Yeah, yeah. It's, especially when you're talking about the. I mean, the, the amount of volts that these cars are often running is enough to kill you. Yeah. I mean, I think they're running. It's like kilowatts and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, it's uh, stuff that can be very dangerous very quickly. So, if you are an electrical engineer and you're comfortable yeah. fiddling with your Tesla slash electric car, more power to you. More power to you. But if you're an average Joe like us, I. I don't recommend it. Maybe we can get into to uh, car repair and stuff later. Yeah. Like, well, you know, mechanic. And like, it's not me. We're changing the oil and no Ford today. There's no oil in my car, sir. You know? <laughs> that's like, true. Like, like, you've got to be a coder, you know, or, you know, somebody that's that's good at computers or, you know, electrical yeah. engineer or something like that just to work on these things. And I know, I know that's where, because I think, I don't know if gas-powered engines are ever going to get completely go away because there is such a co fall at least for the next hundred years oh yeah i mean there'll so always be there will always be pe those people but i feel yeah. like it's we're gonna that's gonna transition more into the tinkerers and yeah. then the actual mechanics are gonna actually be into the electric side of where they're going to school and learning the electrical engineering oh, yeah. side of things to make that yeah or it'll be just all be computer and uh, uh, automated but then there's gonna Spanish. be jobs opening for that too yeah. which is interesting so yeah, which is where the coding is we're gonna see a really interesting dynamic it's gonna be cool to watch and it'll be in our lifetime too we'll yeah. See oh, yeah well, we appreciate you sticking around to the end. We hope you guys enjoyed this. We actually really enjoy getting this opportunity to get together and just kind of talk about it because one of the problems with our old formatting is we didn't really have a lot of chance to flesh out some of these ideas. So uh, we really like this. And if you like it as well, let us know down in the comment section below or, or hit us up on Facebook or Instagram. We are pretty active in both of those. So we'll be more than happy to start a dialogue with you about anything. Uh, but apart from that, we got a really cool video coming out next week. Oh, yeah. Don't know what it is because we are shooting this a little bit in advance, but it's <laughs> <laughs> those of you who can read lips. No, I'm we really appreciate you guys watching this video, and we will see you in the next one. I didn't know what to do this time. <laughs>